the light of Christ, the presence of the risen Lord with us as we gather here today in worship. Good morning. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> Isn't it? It sure is. Where poinsettias arrived yesterday. Thank you to all the people that came out and helped. We really appreciate it. The decoration of the whole building. I know. The worship, worship committee's committee. been busy. It's yeah. fantastic. You know, I love the lights of Christmas. You know, people are so giving at Christmas time. They are. Speaking of which, did you know that this Tuesday, November the 29th, is Giving Tuesday? Yes, I did. Did you know that Giving Tuesday is about encouraging people to be generous? And there are so many ways to do that. It's simple. A day that encourages people to do good on Giving Tuesday and every day. Sure. You know, be giving of your time, make someone smile, help a neighbor, or just make a donation to a fund that you love to support. Everyone has something to give, and every act of generosity counts. This morning, we are giving hope. Hope? Well, yeah, hope. Today is the Advent Sunday of hope. Oh, but it's back here. Yes, it's a sign of God is present, and that we are once more blessed. Yes, and the hope that the Savior is being born. So come, let us worship. Let us celebrate, let us sing together. O come, O come, Emmanuel, verses 1 and 7, the first hymn of Voices United in on the screen. Just in peaceful path. Welcome one another, for Christ welcomes you. For the glory of God. We are here to celebrate Advent, the coming of our Savior. Let us sing, praise, and celebrate the good news. Jesus is coming. The Messiah is coming to earth. Let us join in the opening prayer. Holy God, we long for your peace and trust in your promise. 
We hear your call to turn toward you, to change our lives and welcome you in. Meet us here and fill our minds with your wisdom and our hearts with your peace that our worship together may open us to challenge of your dream of wholeness for all. In the name of the one who is coming, we pray, amen. Let us join in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We want to invite the Huffs forward to share in the lighting of our Advent candles. Today is the advent of hope. We light this candle to bring hope into the shadows. We live in hope for the light at the end of the tunnel and the end of the pandemic. We light this candle as our commitment to bringing healing into the world. We are the hope for a better future. We light this candle to reveal the way of Jesus, the hope of the world. Please join us in singing the first verse of Hope is a Star. The first Sunday in Advent is the day we light our big chrisman tree in the sanctuary. Doesn't our Christmas tree look beautiful? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Chrisman tree. Uh, Christmas tree. Oh, Allison, Allison. Chris, chrisman tree. Um, Val, are you okay? <laughs> I know, a lot of people get confused about the Christmas tree or think Jim and I and you, well, no, you've been saying Christmas, obviously. <laughs> Anyways, so it's, it's called a chrisman tree, and it's very special. Does anyone know what a chrisman is? Okay, well, I just Googled it, and it says that chrismans are Christmas decorations with Christian symbols on them. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. They remind us that Christmas is about Jesus. That's right, we're going to show them in a second so everybody can see. Because that's what Christmas is about, right? Not stockings or presents or Santa. It's about Jesus. Maybe Val can tell us what some of these symbolize. 
Christians. Well, the anchor. Let's see. Anchor. The anchor cross reminds Christians that Jesus is the anchor of our faith. Oh, that makes sense. What's the next one, Val? Oh, the triquerta. Well, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> it's made of three loops, making a triangle. Two, three. And that represents the three parts of the Holy Trinity. Cool. And, and your last, the last one. There you go. One up. I'm going to hold it up high, okay? So everybody That's can see. That's the Alpha and the Omega. And they're the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet. Used together, they symbolize that Christians believe Jesus is the beginning and the end of all things. That makes sense. Can you guys hang these on the tree where they belong? Let's see. Thank you. Let's put them on the tree and see if it looks better because those were missing because I borrowed them from the tree. And it looks funny without them. Can you find a spot to put them? Anywhere you like. Perfect. That looks now better. it looks perfect. It no. needed those last three. No, it doesn't look perfect. There's, there's something missing. What's missing? I, it still doesn't look right. You guys know what's missing from the tree? The lights. The lights. lights. Oh, of course. <laughs> You're right. Maybe Jim would lead us in a countdown to turn on our Chrisman tree lights. <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> So are you ready? We're ready. Ten, Ten, Ten nine, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yay! Oh, now it looks perfect. Jim, could you lead us in a prayer before we go to Sunday school? Sure, let us pray. Oh, God. Oh God. Oh God. May the lights of the chrisman tree. May, May the, the lights, lights of the chrisman tree. And the symbols on the tree. And, and the, the symbols, symbols on the tree. Draw us closer. Draw us closer. To the good news. To the good news. Of Jesus' birth. Of Jesus' birth. Amen. Amen. Okay, if you'd like to go now to Sunday school and the various youth programs. The choir is now going to share an African Advent carol.
we will invite Marie forward to share in the reading of God's holy word. Good morning. Today's reading comes from Matthew. Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way for the Lord. Make his paths straight. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and honey. When the, when the people of Jerusalem and Judea were going out to him, I'm, I'm sorry, then the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and all, from all the region along the Jordan, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to free, flee the wrath to come? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham our ancestor, for I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now, the ax is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for your repentance, but one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to carry his sandals he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor and will gather the wheat into the greenery, but the chaff he will throw into the fire, the unquenchable fire. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. In some form, in some place, at some time, you probably have had one or been involved with a nativity scene. We see one here in front of the communion table. Brett Leverage tells us about nativity scenes. Tradition has it that St. Francis of Assisi created the first crash or nativity scene in 1223, when he mounted a living nativity scene consisting of a manger, an ox, a donkey as part of a Christmas Eve mass, he organized while visiting the mountain town of Grisillo. After the first nativity scene, the practice became popular and it spread far and wide within a century virtually, virtually every church in Italy had taken up the practice. Over time, statues of different materials, rather than living people and animals were used, which eventually led to the nativity scene moving not out of the church into people's homes as well. Nativity scenes are so much a part of the Christmas season. Our 2022 Advent and Christmas series of sermons is entitled, The Message of Nativity Scenes. Each week, Jill or I will discuss a different nativity scene, 
which will be shown on the screen. Over the centuries, artists and craftspeople have created various static and live nativity scenes to express a different perspective on the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. Each nativity scene has a specific message in addition to the message of the good news of the birth of the baby Jesus. All are different materials, colors, and concepts, and they can be used for different purposes. Have you ever been to Bronner's Christmas Wonderland? It's a retail store in Frankenmuth, Michigan, which promotes itself as the world's largest Christmas store. It's designed with an alpine architecture and operates Year-round, the building is 7.35 acres in size. They now have more than 500 nativity scenes from 59-plus nations, which are part of the Bronner's family's personal collections, plus all the ones you're able to purchase throughout the year. Maybe you have your own favorite nativity scene. Maybe it's been handed down through generations. Maybe when you purchased it or you made it, it marks a special event in your life. And that personal history of the nativity scene just adds significance to this act of celebrating Jesus' birth. Now today's nativity scene which is pictured on the screen, is a more modern one. It's made with LED lights. It is outside, and it's life-sized. The photo here is taken at night. Does it remind you of any place nearby that maybe you have visited? Maybe you've been there. It's 91 kilometers from Walton. Niagara Falls. Where in particular in Niagara Falls? Dufferin Islands. Dufferin Islands. Exactly. The winter festival of lights at the falls, specifically Dufferin Islands. It's on the Canadian side. It's above the falls. It's a popular area for locals and tourists year-round. If you haven't been there, I encourage you to go. It's made up of 10 acres of paradise. There are quiet and secluded areas, including several islands, connected by bridges and, and footpaths. From November 12th, so it's running already, to February 20th, this year, there will be countless themed light displays as part of the three million lights of the festival. The displays are especially beautiful, I feel, when the lights are bouncing off the waters of the Niagara River that flows through Dufferin Islands. Now, this year's display is focusing on animals, especially Canadian ones, but in the past, they've had nativity scenes. Just like the scene above on the screen, the lights of the nativity scene bounced off the waters in front of them. Why, you ask, are waters so important? The waters set up and prepare the story of the nativity scene. The focus of the story of the Bible reading today that Marie shared sets up Christmas. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan, confessing their sins. They were baptized by him in the river Jordan. The him is not Jesus, but John, John the Baptist. His birth preceded the birth of Jesus. His ministry preceded the ministry of Jesus. John was the miraculous son of Zechariah, the elderly priest, and his wife Elizabeth, who was far past menopause 
and therefore unable to have children. So two miraculous births. The nativity story, according to the account, the birth of John was foretold by the angel Gabriel to Zechariah while he was performing functions in the temple in Jerusalem. Elizabeth and Mary, the two moms, are described as being related. And John, predicted by the prophet Isaiah, we read, this is he who is spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight the paths for him. You know, so many of the accounts of Jesus, the critical ones take place in Jerusalem, especially that last week of his life. But the story of John takes place out in the wilderness, the wilderness of the Jordan River. He wore clothes of camel hair. He had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. John baptized out there in the wilderness. He called people to repentance or confession. But he said, after me comes one who's more powerful than I am, whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So when I see this nativity scene you see on the screen today, with the water in front of the creche, it reminds me of what today's passage of Scripture is about. It is like John preparing the birth of Jesus. This is the first Sunday of Advent. As was said earlier, the decorations are up. The worship committee and crew have done a wonderful job, not only in our sanctuary, but throughout the church. Memorial poinsettias are in the window, the Christmas tree. We had the countdown to light. The first candle of the Advent wreath is burning. We are in so many ways, personally and as a congregation, preparing for the birth of Jesus in that creche 2,000 years ago. Preparing, more importantly, for the rebirth or the of Jesus in our hearts and in our lives. Part of this congregation's preparation for Advent is on the first Sunday of Advent, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. We share the bread and wine. We come to the table of Jesus. We prepare for this time of Advent with the Feast of the Holy Sacrament. The table is ready. Let us prepare for the Nativity of our Lord. Let us sing One Bread, One Body, verse 1467, and on the screen.
Here is bread, good news for the world with a headline that says, Let all who are hungry for justice come and eat. Here is the wine, good news for all who long with a headline that says, Let us all who thirst for righteousness come and drink. Here is the table, good news for all who are lost, with a headline that says, All who are weary, come and gather here. Here is the table, good news for all who are lost, with a headline that says, All who are weary, come and gather here. Here is a community, good news for all whom the world ignores, with a headline that says, Behold, I make all things new. Come and be renewed. Here is Jesus. Good news for all who wait with a headline that says, I have come that all may have life. Come and live life fully. As John the Baptist out in the wilderness called people to repentance, we come in our prayer of confession let us pray. Holy God, open our eyes to the presence of your Spirit upon us, within us, among us, for our apathy in the presence of oppression. Forgive us. We have contributed to the brokenheartedness, if we have contributed to the brokenheartedness of anyone. Forgive, Forgive us. us for our participation in systems that enslave, Forgive us when we are deaf to your good news. Have, have mercy, mercy and open our ears. When our mouths remain too tightly closed, loosen our lips with songs of praise. Hear our prayer, O oh God, and forgive our sins. Hold us Amen. in your mercy, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We thank you, Father, that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the meal, he took the cup, and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, we thank you for the gifts of bread and wine and pray that we who eat and drink them, believing our Savior's word, may share his holy body and blood. Amen. body of Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us ask a blessing upon these elements. Loving God, consecrate by your Holy Spirit this bread and this wine for your use in our lives as we begin this Advent season, may these elements nurture us for the journey ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are sharing this service with us virtually, we invite you to pause and find in your home elements, bread and wine or suitable alternatives, and continue with us in this holy sacrament as we join in this blessing. In a moment, the servers will come forward and they will hand out the individual containers 
of bread and wine. These are for our safety and health and well-being, as well as nourishing our soul. And there's a little challenge to them. <laughs> you have, some of us, a lot of challenge. <laughs> Uh, you remove the first one to, to reach the bread, the second one to reach the wine. And if you would like to hold them until all have been served, we will partake together in this feast. How I know, however, I know some of you prefer to take these uh, with you, and you're welcome to do that, into the parking lot. Some people have the sacrament in their car. Some people even sit on the benches outside. Some people go home and celebrate this. There's people who even wait till 2 o'clock till the service is, is mounted, it, it's, it's posted. They come to this place in the service and then they partake. However you feel comfortable, that is the invitation. I would invite the service forward now. Jesus Christ, the bread of life, nourish and strengthen you to do the will of God.
Jesus Christ, the true vine, grant unto you God's gift of eternal life. There are, as you leave the sanctuary, brown uh, plastic uh, containers, boxes that you can place uh, with these um, holders, these cups, and they are recyclable. Let us join in the prayer after communion. God our Father, you fill the hungry with good things and send the self-satisfied away empty. In this Eucharist, you have filled us with the word and the bread of life of your Son, Jesus Christ. Make us hunger now for his coming in the hearts and homes of all this Christmas season and all year long. Fill us with his spirit of service and self-forgetting love that through us he may become near to people. We ask this in Jesus, of Jesus the Lord. Amen. As we enter into the season of giving, what is that? We have a season of giving? Why do we call it a season? Shouldn't we be living giving? Hmm. Lord, help me make giving a way of living. Not a season that we enter into once a year. Help us to share what blessings we have with one another whether that's through our offering envelope or online or dropping a check off or giving to the food bank. Our offerings this morning will now be received. Let us pray. Lord of our life, the path to you is straight, yet we waver in our behavior like Pharisees and Sadducees. Our hopes and dreams are often self-serving and materialistic. We rush through the season, buying gifts we hope will convey the right, the right message. However, you invite us to ask ourselves if we are equally as busy preparing messages that proclaim the good news to a hurting world. Through giving, remind us again, O oh God, of the baptismal covenant. This Advent, may we proclaim a message that is implied by your generosity our kindness, and our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us remain standing as we sing Hark the Glad Sound, verse one, to, uh, uh, 29 on the screen and in Voices United.
we receive the benediction. We receive the story of John the Baptist, John the timely prophet. With the example of John, we will be ready to repent. With the courage of John, we will confront the powerful ones. With the insight of John, we will identify hypocritical behavior. With the humility of John, we will give Jesus our commitment. With the devotion of John, we will serve faithfully. God will keep your prophetic vision bright as you go from this place. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us join in singing, Walk in the Light. Thank you for sharing this service uh, with us. It's great to see so many. I thought you, some people might be at a soccer party this morning. <laughs> but, but we made the service vow, didn't we, so that people will have time to get home yeah. for the 11 o'clock start. <sighs> Thursday, December the 8th at 1.30, UCW is meeting. Carol service, Sunday, December the 8th. 11th at 7 p.m. Now, uh, as you are watching the game, you can, with your uh, cell phone, go and register after 12 noon today uh, to come to the carol service. We are asking everyone, unless you are actually in the choir singing, so we ask you to register. We are limiting the capacity. And if you, choir members, if you have family coming, they need to register as well. Uh, so please do that. While the Walton Mitten tree is not in the corner, it's certainly in the corner of the Bronte Hall stage, and it's getting fuller and fuller, so we encourage you, uh, you can go into Bronte Hall. The Cookie Walk Compromise is Saturday, December 3rd at 1 p.m., you don't have to pre-register, but you do, uh, you may want to come right at one or a little bit earlier to get a good place in the line. These are pre-selected, pre-packaged homemade cookies, uh, maximum two boxes per person. Uh, we're looking for bakers, for donors. Uh, Friday uh, during the day, you can drop it off, and I think it's from seven uh, to nine at night. Am I correct with that? Nine to four during the day and seven to eight thirty at night, and before ten o'clock on the Saturday. White gift is next Sunday, December the fourth. Our annual second Sunday of Advent. Uh, service uh, of white gift the outreach ministry on the sunday school and our special guests that day um, we're asking for new unwrapped gifts for all ages from babies to adults uh, please no stuffed animals or guns uh, toy guns 
or real ones, I guess. <laughs> I should make that distinction. <laughs> also, if you prefer gift cards uh, to supermarkets and drugstores and uh, that type of, uh, of business, uh, you can also uh, donate uh, through our website. And finally, I draw to your attention on Sunday, December the 18th at 9.30 and 11. Uh, we will have the dedication of Christmas memorials. And we have the beautiful plants, and I think we have 60 in, in, in the church. Uh, but we are now focusing on the Walton Benevolent Fund. And you can do a write-up. We will do the write-up of that gift. And please leave that at the office. Or you can uh, go through the Walton website. So have a blessed day today, uh, whether you are watching the game or decorating or putting Christmas lights up. Uh, thank you for being here.